Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. It is your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and we'll be talking right now about ionic compounds, electron give and take. Now, when you have an ionic compound, you will have a cation, which is a positively charged uh, particle, and an anion, which is a negatively charged particle. And that's kind of how it works. So what happens in an ionic bond, right here, is you'll have a cation, which is positive, and anion, which is negative. And they will not be physically connected, but they will be strongly attracted, okay? So an ionic bond is not a physical connection. It is an extreme attraction, okay? They're very attracted. The plus and the minus come together. Very, very good attraction, very extreme attraction. And this is known as the ionic compound, okay? That's what it's known as. So. Here we have a sodium atom, here we have a chlorine atom. Sodium has one valence electron, wants to dump it off to have an octet. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, wants to take an electron to achieve the octet. So this electron right here will literally jump or transfer or move itself into the chlorine. The chlorine at this point has an octet, but now adopts a negative charge. The sodium now has lost an electron, adopts a positive charge. Let's take a closer look at this. Sodium. Sodium has 11 protons, so plus 11. Sodium has obviously 11 electrons if it's not an ion, if it's an atom. That's an overall charge of zero, no charge at all, okay? If sodium will lose an electron, it will still have 11 protons. But now the electrons will be 10. It lost, if you will, it lost a marble, okay? So if you lose a marble, lose a negative charge, you become overall positive, okay? So if you lose one electron, you become positive one. If you lose two electrons, you become positive two. If you lose three electrons, you become positive three. How's that sound? Hope that's okay. If not, let's, we'll, we'll do another example. We'll do, this time we'll do chlorine. Let me just back all this stuff out a little bit. By the way, guys, if I'm going too fast, so just rewind and pause the video. You don't have to listen to it all in one stint. You can pause and rewind, do all kinds of stuff, right? Chlorine has protons plus 17. Oops. 17. So the electrons are equal to negative 17. No charge. Overall, zero charge on chlorine. If chlorine were to gain one electron, the protons would still equal 17. But now the electrons will be 18. You gain an electron, so now you have 18 electrons instead of 17. Overall charge now will be negative one, okay? And that's where the charge comes from. Let me make that one a little prettier. That's pretty ugly. Negative one. Not much better, but a little better. Negative one. So the chlorine becomes negative one at that point. Now, when you're making an ionic compound, the cations and the anions will combine to form a compound that has a charge of zero. The cations charge must equal the anions charge. If you have a total of plus three cat, uh, positives, you must have negative three. If you have five positives, you must have five negatives. It has to work that way, okay? Now, the formula will show you the ratio of cations to anions, okay? But the charges must add up to equal zero. Now, let's have a look at this. Sodium is going to bond, say, to chlorine. Well, we know sodium is plus one if it forms an ion. We know chloride is negative one if it forms a ion. That's plus one and negative one, so that equals zero. That's already what they call charge balanced. So the formula for sodium chloride will be NaCl. One sodium, one chloride to make the formula balance. And that's a simple one because it was a one-to-one -one ratio of cations to anions to make the formula balance. 
So it's a fairly easy one. Let's do a different one. Let's do one that's not so easy. Let's do barium, which is in group two. So it's positive two, loses two valence electrons, to chloride. So where are we at? We have positive two from the barium, negative one from the chloride. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Oops, sorry guys. Getting all out of control here. There we go. So, we have to balance the formula. Right now we have a, a positive 2 and a negative 1, so there's an overall charge. We need the charge to be 0. So, we can do one of two things. We can either add more barium or add more chloride. If we add it more barium, so we add another barium atom or ion, then the charge becomes positive 4. We made things worse. Things didn't get better, they got worse. So, let's not do that. So adding another barium didn't do any good. So let's add instead another chloride. All you can do is add one or the other. You can you can sometimes add both, depending on the situation, but normally you just have to add one or the other. So I added barium, made it worse. Now I'm adding chloride. So now I have negative one, negative one. Now my negatives are negative two. See how that worked? So now the formula is balanced. But in order to balance the formula, I need it to have one barium and two chlorides to balance that formula. See the difference? Here I had one chloride, one sodium, so it was a one-to-one -one ratio. Here, on this situation, I had one barium cation and two chloride anions. Okay? The barium brought plus two to the party. The chlorides each brought negative one to the party. So it's a one barium to two chloride ratio. And that's how you solve these kinds of questions. If I ask you to make a formula, this is how you do it. Now, oops, I'm sorry guys, I went too far. Let's go back up here. And there we go, there. Now here's the, the book's step-by-step -step procedures on how to do it. Uh, they also go over uh, something called the crisscross trick, which you may want to read in your book, familiarize yourself with it. I, uh, I don't go over that. I go over the way I did it. It's a more robust way of doing it. Now, naming ionic compounds is extremely simple. It's very easy to do. Name the cation first. Name the anion second. We kind of already went over this. So let's just do some examples. Now, when you're naming ionics, you never use prefixes. In other words, I'm never going to say trisodium or disodium or tetrachloride or anything like that. It's always just name the cation, name the anion, and that's it. Name the cation, name the anion, and that's it. So here we have lithium bromide. Remember, the anion will change its name to the IDE. The anion will change its name to the IDE. Chlorine becomes chloride. Bromine becomes bromide, and so on. Sodium phosphate. Not trisodium. It's sodium. Sodium phosphate. This is a polyatomic. You just look it up on the polyatomic chart. All right, pause the video here. You give this a try. You name all uh, five polyatomic, or sorry, ionic compounds. Some of them are a little challenging. They have polyatomics in them. You're going to have to use a polyatomic chart. Pause the video, get the chart out, and figure these out, guys. Come back when you're done. All right, welcome back. Sodium chloride. This one, sodium, oops, sodium with an S. Now that is bicarbonate. Or sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, depending on... Uh, Oh, did I just do that? I put the abbreviation. Sorry about that, fellas. Let me draw that. Let me do that again. Or sodium hydrogen carbonate. I 
put the symbol for sodium, not the spelling. This one is calcium phosphate. So again, it's a polyatomic. This one is lithium hydroxide. Again, another polyatomic. There's a cation that's polyatomic. It's the only cation that's polyatomic that you have to know. Ammonium. Hydro uh, don't, not hydroxide, sorry. Chloride. So these are pretty tough. Hopefully you got them right. If not, go back and review some of the video. Uh, naming ionics is very simple. Just name the cation, name the anion. You're done. There's nothing, nothing harder than that. Ionics are very simple. You know you have an ionic when, generally speaking, you have a metal. That's one good giveaway. Or a polyatomic ion. Okay? Now let's go the opposite direction. We have the name. Let's make the formula. These are a little tougher. These are a little tougher. Okay? Sodium sulfide. Well, I know sodium is Na plus. Sulfide is negative 2. So I have a positive 1, negative 2. I need to have a positive 2 to balance out the negative 2, so I need to have 2 sodium. So the formula must be Na2S for the first one. Again, I had to have plus 2 to balance out the negative 2 of the sulfide. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, let's do this one. We'll do it over here. NH4, that's ammonium. And ammonium is positive 1. You looked it up on the chart. Chloride is negative 1. So the formula for so ammonium chloride would be NH4Cl. We just did that in the previous question. That was one of the answers for the previous question. Or one of the, one of the questions, actually. Barium, which is BA, which is a plus 2 charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic, has a negative 1 charge. So I need to have 2 OH- minus to balance the charge of the barium. Okay. Now you'd write it like this, BA, and when you have a polyatomic ion, and there's more than one of them, you have to put the polyatomic in parentheses. Why is that? Because this 2, that 2 right there, let me get rid of that, let me try that again. That 2 right there multiplies everything inside that parentheses by that number. So here we have a 2. That means we have two of these. If that had been, this number here had been like a 6, we would have had 6 of these. So this is a multiplier. That 2 is a multiplier for whatever's in the parentheses. All right? Let me just clean that up a little bit. There you go. So this is 2 is multiplying the OH by 2. Why? because there's two of them here required to balance the formula. All right, you try. Pause the video, take a second, figure these out, and come on back when you're done. All right, welcome back. Sodium bromide, NaBr. Potassium iodide is Ki. Calcium carbonate is CaCO3. Magnesium oxide is MgO. And ammonium bicarbonate is NH4HCO3. Now, I just gave you the answers there. I'm thinking at this point you know how to do it. If any of these are wrong, go back and review the entire section on naming. Even try looking at your book. Get this stuff right. It's not hard, but you have to understand how to do it. If on the exam this is the first time you're trying to do this, you are going to have a hard time. This is not something that you're born with. You have to kind of learn it. All right, so we'll stop this video here, and we'll pick it up again at 3.4. All right, guys, so I wish you good luck, good chemistry.